One of the things people like about devices powered by the Android operating system is the ability to root them and run custom ROMs. I'm Joe Levi for Pocket Now. This is a look at Cyanogen Mod 11 for the Nexus 5. This is my Nexus 5, and until I undertook this project to move over to Cyanogen Mod, I've been running stock, and I've been really happy with the stock version of Android that comes with the device. It's been really good to me. However, I'm a custom ROMer, and I love Cyanogen Mod, so I went ahead and uh, loaded up the uh, Milestone 1 release of Cyanogen Mod 11 and had all kinds of problems with it. However, the uh, December 9th and December 10th nightlies haven't had any problems to speak of so far. These are still nightlies. It's unstable. You're going to run into some issues, some bugs and whatnot, app crashes. Overall, not a problem. However, the M1, all kinds of problems, at least for me. So let's go ahead and take a look around. The first thing you are going to get when you uh, fire up your device in the morning is your launcher. And this is the regular Google Experience launcher, as you can see here. We can even say, okay, Google, is it going to snow today? I've got my sound turned off, so it's not going to speak to us, but it would. It works great. It does everything that it's supposed to. Uh, absolutely love it. Uh, another thing that you're going to notice is when you turn the power on and you have this lock, you now have the ability to quick unlock into various different activities or just do a straight unlock. You also have that ability now with the Google Launcher. You've kind of had that in the past with CyanogenMod Mod ROMs where you can add shortcuts here to either side, though I haven't set them up yet. So let's go ahead and take a look in the settings and see what we have. First of all, here is our toggles. You can see quite a bit more information here. If we switch over to the other side, you can see I've also got those quick toggles across the top here. This is an option that I did turn on. We'll walk through really quickly kind of where to see that. Uh, this also mirrors these, so you don't have to maintain them in two different places. Really, really kind of nice and kind of does away with the need for uh, your toggles because you can quick toggle to them. Anyway, moving into settings, let's start off first and foremost with home. You can select either launcher, which is what I've selected, or launcher three, which we're not gonna go into much in this video. Next is the lock screen where you can go in and set your slider shortcuts. If you don't like what comes prepackaged, you can set your own. You can set up your widgets for C-Lock, your clock and alarm, weather panel, your calendar events and whatnot, set those up. You can maximize your widgets or go in and allow multiple widget pages to be added and selected to your lock screen. So a lot of the stuff that we've seen before. Themes now making an entry into Cyanogen Mod 11 and KitKat. This is stuff that we've been used to since, what, back in Cyanogen Mod 9, maybe even before with the, uh, the T-Mobile themer that they uh, open sourced and, and built into Cyanogen Mod. I don't have any other themes to show you here, but it works just exactly the same. Select which one you want, apply, and then you can get all of your uh, different colors and whatnot. Uh, your themes, just, it's beautiful. It does what it's supposed to do, it's great. Moving on, into interface, we can change stuff in the status bar. I've chosen up here that I want my uh, battery style to be a circle with a percent. The default is just circle. This looks very empty. I suspect they're going to fill it up with the other stuff from uh, previous versions of Cyanogen Mod. We'll see that as it progresses. Quick pull down. All this other stuff, auto close. Just let you look through here and see what you can get in the quick settings panel. Notification drawers, kind of the same thing. Auto close behavior. Expanded desktop, which I have turned off. Buttons and layout, so you can change the buttons down at the bottom or the order of them if you want. And quick launch shortcuts, and this is what I was talking about. So you can add a, a quick launch for, uh, for that one. Uh, we'll just do torch because it's quick. And then we can turn our flashlight on. Just that simple. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Buttons. We can change the way that the buttons behave. Power menu, we can make it show the reboot menu, screenshots, a whole bunch of other stuff right there. It's very nice. Of course, I don't have expanded desktop enabled, so it's not gonna show us that. Uh, playback control with a long press of the volume button. We can essentially just move through the tracks that are playing. So very nice. We don't even have to turn on the device or turn on the screen to, uh, to control the music. Reorient the volume buttons. Don't you hate it when you tip your phone 
and now the volume slider and the volume buttons are opposite of one another. Well, CyanogenMod thought so too, and now you can reorient those. That's what I've done, so it more closely matches what it should be. That, again, is a carryover from previous versions as well. Profiles, also from previous versions of CyanogenMod, lets you go in and set up default rules for default locations. So home, work, train, car, uh, whatever you want to do, you can even set up a custom one, church, if you will, uh, that will turn on and off various things. Uh, you can have it turn on Bluetooth, turn off Bluetooth, uh, leave whatever the status is alone, all kinds of cool stuff that you can do in there, and you can even assign an NFC tag to do that quick toggle, which is something that we've shown you here at Pocket Now in the past. You do have a new account. It's a CyanogenMod account. This is what's used to send all of your metrics and your user statistics over if you've opted into that stuff. Um, you do have to sign in or sign up for that or skip through it when you set up your device the first time, which if you're familiar with CyanogenMod 10.2, some of the later versions incorporated that change as well. I've already gone in and uh, tapped on this to be a developer. So I'll show you the uh, the developer options and the performance stuff in just a minute. This is Android 4.4.1, even though 4.4.2 was just released yesterday or today, uh, depending on when you're watching this video. Of course, it may have been a little while ago, but we should see an update to 4.4.2 somewhat soon. If you want to get updates, here's that updates panel, just like we've seen before. And then here's your uh, statistics that are tied back into your CyanogenMod account. So let's go into developer options. Most of the stuff here is pretty much what you'll see with just regular versions of Android. The, uh, the performance, however, is where you can go in and do all kinds of fun stuff, like change your CPU governor, I like to do on demand, and you can set your minimum and maximum frequencies, though for some reason it doesn't seem to be uh, restoring those settings on boot, or at least not restoring this interface at boot. So every time I come back in, it goes back to whatever it was before, though I think it still respects that minimum threshold. Just a, a little quirk that uh, we've seen in previous versions of CyanogenMod that they'll need to work on as they progress. IO scheduler, I leave this alone, defaults to CFQ, and memory management, which I turn on. There's not all of the other memory management options in here like previous versions of CyanogenMod, at least not yet. We'll probably see more as the, uh, the ROM progresses, but turn that on, reboot to allow purging of assets. And then if you want to, uh, to drop down your screen resolution transparency a bit, you can speed it up at the cost of some graphic quality by, by selecting that. As you can see, not all the features that you're used to in that CyanogenMod 10.X ROMs have made it over into the CyanogenMod 11 ROM. That's okay, it's still very, very early. We just passed Milestone 1. They're adding in features and making them work with the new KitKat infrastructure. If you liked what you saw here, why not throw the video a thumbs up, and of course make sure you've subscribed if you have not done so already. Doing so keeps you up to date with all that's new and happening in the world of mobile technology. While you're at it, why don't you share this video with your friends on your favorite social media networks. My favorite is Twitter, where we are at PocketNow, and I am at Joe Levi. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you next time.